Hi there, so this is my user review of the General 3000. Uh, this is the uh, European version, I believe. It's, um, it comes with around 15 pieces and it's about £40 you can get it on Amazon for. And the American version, I think, comes with a few more pieces and uh, it comes with, uh, it's about 60 bucks. So I'll, I'll post a few links in the bottom so you can find them afterwards. Uh, but first of all, I'm going to get straight into it and show you what's inside. Uh, so, it comes in a, a little case like this with 3D lettering on the front, just to keep all your stuff together. Um, and in the case, you'll find the Dremel and a few extra pieces. It's pretty simple, and there's a user guide, uh, also. but we're more interested in what it actually feels like as a user. Um, so, one of the first things I wanted to talk about is the actual weight that it, it, it the weight of it in your hand, um, because one of the things you can't really gauge with these pneumatic and uh, electronic devices is how much it actually weighs and what it's going to be like when you're using it for a long period of time. I tend, I tend to use it, um, the Dremel, for around an hour at a time for different trimming things, and um, I use uh, carbon fiber trimming actually. So yeah, it's pretty pretty useful. Um, I just I've got a set of scales in front of me, so I'll do a quick weigh of that. It's just a zero device. So, zeroed, put the drum on, I'm just lifting the cables to make sure that you get a free weight measurement. So it's around 470 grams there. Yeah, so personally, I think it's actually pretty lightweight for an electronic rotary uh, device. Um, so, I mean, I use it an hour at a time, so... Um, you don't, you don't get too tired. The only thing I would say is that when you're running at a high speed, um, when you're running at a high speed, you get uh, quite a bit of vibration, um, and your hands can sometimes get a bit tingly after you've used it for around an hour or two. So you can do, you can wear certain things to kind of get around that. I'll show you in a, in a moment. But um, one of the first things I'd like to do is show you what it sounds like when it's on. So. This is on the lowest setting. You've got your variable speed control here. As you turn it up, it's pretty fast to react. If you can hear me over that. Now that's full speed. And you can really feel the air blowing off. So yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's pretty loud, so um, uh, one, you might want to wear some uh, some earphones like this, especially when you're especially when you're trimming the actual stuff. When you're when you're on the substrate and on the job, cutting away, it does create quite a piercing sound. So uh, make sure I've done another uh, video on uh, protective gear, but I'll show you afterwards what I usually wear when I'm trimming stuff. Um, so yeah, make sure you wear earphones and. Uh, you can hold you can hold it in different ways. Like as, um, I may have mentioned before, but you, you, the, way, the way that I like to hold it is um, is putting my one of my fingers into this little groove section, and then my thumb over the variable speed control. So I've just got control of that all the time. And then I like to put my my finger down towards the end of it so that I've got control and press on the pressure um, as um, as I'm trimming along. Uh, but you can use it more like a pencil, um, as long as you, you're keeping these clear, these blowholes, because it's a air-cooled um, motor, basically. Um, I've actually opened these up, and it's pretty simple inside. It's just a few bearings and a big spindle. And, but because it's so small and there's this plastic casing, it keeps insulated, so you need to make sure that these holes are open uh, all the time so it can cool down. Um, it does have an overheat um, kind of safety protection on it, and protection on it, just like uh, you have on a hair dryer. If you use it for too long, it turns off, and you you leave it for a, uh, an hour or two, and it and it will start working again. Um, it's just so it doesn't damage the components inside. Um, but yeah, um, one of the things uh, I'd like to talk about is how you can change these devices, um, the little end pieces, and so you basically got to click a little. Uh, lock clicker here and when you press down on it that locks the spindle and this 
bit here is on a thread. So when you open and close the thread, it tightens and loosens this, uh, this attachment at the end. So now it's solid. And then when you loosen it, it's loose. So you can just take it out. And This only fits one size of um, drill bit. I believe it's about three millimeters or just below three millimeters. So if you wanted to put, um, if you were gonna try and use it as a hand drill, you can only really do around three millimeters uh, for drilling. But it does come up, it does come with a, uh, a small hand drill piece, uh, drill bit, sorry. Uh, but there's only one because obviously it only fits one. So um, uh, yeah, so that's the first thing. I like to use these sanding discs a lot. Uh, I think they're called sanding drums. Because uh, you can buy about 100 of them for six pounds on on uh, Amazon, and so that's six pence each, and they just uh, they last quite a long time, a uh, relatively long time, um, maybe around uh, 15 to 30 minutes, depending on what you're you're trimming away, um, and so but um, just changing it every changing it every 50 minutes is fine because they're only six pence, so um, I really don't mind about that uh, one of the, yeah so so that's so that's the this is the my one of my favorite devices to use on the end of the general we've also got uh, something that doesn't come in the set which is a diamond cutter um, and if you want to be cutting really hard materials like um, stone or uh, or carbon fiber or whatever this is really good for grinding away at it because especially especially once it's got in, it has this diamond edge here, and then once it's got in, it also grinds on the edges here, so it doesn't get stuck and it doesn't wear out of uh, cutting material. So these are really good. I think you can buy them in sets of ten, um, also on Amazon. I'll post links for all of the things that I've talked about in this uh, review at the bottom afterwards, so you can check them out. Uh, yeah, you can buy a set of 10. I think uh, these are about a pound each, but they are diamond cutters and they work really, really well. They, these, these last about um, a, week, a week to a month of time of hard use. So one pound for a week to a month of hard use is pretty damn good, um, especially if you're cutting really hard materials. But if you're using something like this and you're cutting a hard material, make sure you wear safety goggles. Uh, and polycarbonate lens because uh, if you've got if this fails and you've got a piece of metal flying at I think the top speed of this is twenty four thousand rpm uh, that will go into your eye and you can cause a lot of damage. Um, the the set itself comes with these uh, aluminium oxide discs which are great uh, but they don't last as long as as these uh, diamond cutters. And uh, they, these are really brittle, so they snap off quite easily. And especially when they get hot, um, they become more brittle um, because, uh, actually I don't really know uh, why they become more brittle when they're hot. Um, but yeah, I would, I would definitely be careful and wear proper safety glasses for when you're using these discs at high speed. Um, yeah, I can advise more than that. Uh, so I think that's those are my favourite devices. I'll show you a bit more what comes into the box um, in, it, in itself. You get a little polishing wheel. So if you're doing polishing compounds, uh, using polishing compounds to polish metal or uh, lacquers or whatever, and you want to do small detailed work for modelling, um, then you can use that. And what comes, and it's pretty easy to fit because you get a, a skewer with a thread on it and you basically you get the little hole there and you screw it in and because of the way that it screws in and the direction that the uh, dremel is spinning it just tight it con continuously tightens so it's it doesn't fall off um, basically so it's always in the tightening direction um, there's a few other bits uh, another aluminium oxide device um, uh, it's got quite a sharp edge on this one, so if you want to do detailed cutting, um, you can really get into those corners with this one. I never used this, to be honest. You can see that it's never, never been used. Although these pieces are quite new, um, we've never ever used this. Um, <laughs> just because um, 
just the nature of work that I'll do. And, um, there's a kind of cleaning brush which you can use to uh, clean out uh, kind of small cracks or uh, clean something before you paint it. Um, I also never use this, but it's pretty easy to switch and change. I'll show you. So hold on to that button, twist this here, put the next one in, go all the way down. Now it's ready. And also on the safety point of the um, of these discs, when you're running any of these these things at high speed, there's a butt end here which stops it from going into the device. If you're running at full speed, you really want this to be as close as possible to the Dremel because it makes it makes sure that this uh, this accessory is going to spin as true as possible to the spindle um, when it's spinning. And if you've got it running out here, the it's it's a lot more dangerous because and it and it won't run as it won't run efficiently because the the Dremel bit is more likely to want to bend and it won't spin as true. So I can show you the difference in sound. I'm just going to put some goggles on just to make sure that I'm safe when I'm doing it. <laughs> so I'm going to put this on full speed without with it running right up to the butt. Then I'm going to put it a little bit further out. I'm not going to do it all the way because I want it to be relatively safe for this video. You can actually notice it, you can see it vibrating and it just is not very safe. Um, and, it, and it makes a louder noise, um, so there's more resistance in the actual rotary um, direction. So uh, make sure that you, you properly put it right up to the butt unless you really can't, then just run it at a little lower speed. Um, because uh, I know sometimes you need to get you need to get that little bit of extension in order to get to a certain piece or a certain job. Um, yeah, so um, that is about it on the, the accessories you get with it. Uh, on one more thing on the sanding disc is that uh, I'll show you how they wear out because you need to be a little bit careful of. Um, what um, of, of the stuff that you're wearing when, the, when you're using it. So basically, um, this is a, is a worn sanding disc. And you can see that some of this sanding disc is torn away. Um, and that pretty much happens instantaneously. Um, so the more you change these things, the better the cutting you're going to get on them, uh, because less of the material is worn away every time you use a new one. Um, but if you have a really precise job, you want to make sure that you don't use these um, too heavy, like don't put too much pressure on them when you're using them because the actual thing that holds the sanding discs in is rubber. So as the rubber heats up, it starts to expand and that puts pressure on the actual disc itself. So this is a disc without the rubber on. And I'll show you the rubber section underneath quickly. You also get a tool like this to tighten up fully. So you just use the back of that tool, unscrew it, and you can see there's a rubber drum inside. But as that heats up, the therm the thermal expansion of this, I think it's nitrile uh, rubber, um, puts pressure. Um, it has more expansion than the actual um, drum itself, so it expands at a greater rate than the drum. Therefore, it puts pressure on it, and so as it heats up and this starts to wear away, this starts to fall off. <clears throat> and as it falls off, it happens pretty much instantaneously, and it starts buzzing. And if you've got, um, if you're working on your workpiece, and it's buzzing, as in there's like a flick, there's like a piece of paper flicking off, it will damage your workpiece. So you, um, it can, and especially if you've got like detailed paint or whatever, you don't want to, you don't want to have a, a big flap coming off. Um, because it will just it'll, uh, it'll it'll just ruin things really. So um, yeah, so make sure you're careful of how much pressure you put, and make sure it's not getting too hot uh, when you're when you're cutting something away. Um, so some of the just some of the pieces that we wear that I wear, particularly when I'm using the Dremel, is 
earplugs, ear defenders actually. I've got another review on all these pieces of protective uh, equipment so you can see what they are exactly. I'll, I'll post the link as well in the bottom or, or put it over the screen so you can see it. Because the Dremel is really, really, um, it's not super loud, but it, it's piercing, uh, I, would, I would say. Um, you want to make sure you protect your ears because you can, over a long period of time, get tinnitus. Uh, and even short-term tinnitus, like just ringing your ears when you're sleeping, is not nice. So I would definitely wear a very cheap pair of um, headphones when you're doing it. Uh, face mask, you, uh, if you choose to wear um, face mask it's for your own protection and the polycarbonate safety gog goggle lenses I'll show you what it all looks like when it's on if you're cool you wear it this way but you can't wear it like that too <laughs> I like to wear it like this So, you can wear all that gear, personal protective equipment. Uh, and I, I mentioned about vibrations. Um, as this is running at full speed, it can um, get, it can, uh, after about an hour's worth of use, you can start to feel your fingers tingling. Um, and one, one way you can get away with um, uh, fingers tingling is use a little bit of a decoupling me mechanism. So. Don't, uh, you, can, you can either hold it less tight or you can use some kind of uh, cushioning on your hands to stop it from uh, transferring so much of those vibrations through to your, to your glove. So when it's running full speed, so when it's running full speed, you can, you can hardly feel it in your hands. Um, you, can, you can definitely feel it in your hands as you're, if, you're, if you're not using it. Um, but yeah, um, that's that's just my advice. Um, I think that's about it for the Dremel 3000. Uh, I think in general, uh, as an overview, I think it's a pretty damn good product, especially for, it, in the instance of having it as a, t as a tool and not having it as a tool, I use the Dremel pretty much every single day um, and it's really useful. It's just like having uh, another hand drill. There's so many little jobs that you can use the, the Dremel for. Um, I definitely would keep it in my man's cupboard. <laughs> uh, there's, this is one of the, I'd probably say one of the top five things that I'll keep in there. And it's also a pretty decent price for something that's so useful. Um, and I think Dremel have figured that out because the price is something that's uh, attainable to pretty much anyone. So. Uh, yeah, it's a great um, addition to uh, your man's drawer or something, whatever you're using it for. Um, there are a few different versions of the Dremel. There's the 3000, 4000, or whatever, and you can go up in the grades and there's a few different features you can add. But the basic version is actually pretty damn good uh, for the money. Um, uh, the amount of time saving there is on, on doing some of the jobs you can do with this as opposed to hand. Um, hand fettling or whatever, um, or, or getting a whole setup like with the pneumatic um, devices you can get. Uh, one of the thing, the reasons we went for electric over pneumatic is that you have to have a, unless you've got a, a fully plumbed in compressor system, um, having a compressor next to you in, in a room is, um, is, is way louder, is actually way louder than having this on its own. Um, and you can just plug this in anywhere. You don't have to carry a huge like compressor with you. So, uh, yeah. Overall, I'd say it's a pretty good device for the money, um, and I would um, stick with Dremel as a as a brand um, because um, they're pretty good with their warranty and um, and the customer service as well. Um, yeah. So. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put some links in the bottom of the page for you to check out where I found all these devices uh, and all the little bits that came with it. Um, and yeah, if you've got any questions, just leave me a comment below and I'll be happy to answer. So I hope you like this uh, review and uh, I'll put some more up if you like it. So cheers. Speak to you soon.